Hey, what's up guys, Jake Whip here back for another video and today we're going to be making this awesome uh, watch effect inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So as you can see, we have a bunch of stuff going on. First off, all of it's tracked on here. We have a bunch of uh, animated images. We've got some nice lens reflections happening, if you guys can see that. I like this blue right down here. Uh, all to make this really cool effect. So let's jump right into making this. I'm just going to grab my fusion clip again here. Um, so we start fresh and jump into fusion. Alright, so step one, I'm going to track this. So I'm just going to do shift space and type planar tracker, okay? And then I'll just uh, make some marks around my watch here, just like that. And now we have to set the reference time to the frame that we're on. So just hit set, and then we will track it backwards first. As you can see, this is extremely fast and accurate. And now that uh, it's tracked as far as it can go, we're going to hit go on the reference time and then hit track forward. All right, so that's done. Just go through and make sure it's an accurate track and it looks pretty good to me. So now we're going to come over here and do create planar transform. Okay, so now this node appears and this is just like a transform node that you can adjust. Um, and it's to the motion of my watch now. So we're gonna grab my first element. So if I come to the media pool, I have the circle element that I got off of productioncrate.com. So if you guys want some awesome assets like this, you guys can head over to their store. I have a link in the description where you guys can do that. Otherwise, you can make all of these things inside of DaVinci Resolve. So I'll make a tutorial in the future on how to make HUD graphics, uh, but for now, I'm just gonna use the ones from Production Crate since they are so easy to use and they look great. All right, so now I'm gonna uh, attach the planar transform and then hook the media in one up to this. And now as you can see, this is kind of a weird effect here. As you can see, the uh, it's not tracked in perfectly at all. It's bouncing all around. And so the issue that we're running into here is my media in two here is 4K, but my media in one is only 1080. So it creates some weird effects. So how we're gonna fix this is making it so the media in two is only 1080. So we'll grab a background and we'll make this transparent, okay? Make sure that the resolution is set to 1920 by 1080 and then connect this up to the media in one. As you can see, it came in as the foreground, but we want it as the background. So hit the merge and do control T. All right, so now as you can see, it is tracked on perfectly and it's not gonna move around at all. If we view the merge, um, as you can see, it's getting cut off a little bit. So let's add a transform after the media in and just scale it down so that the entire graphic is in the frame and right on the edges. Awesome. Now after the merge, we'll add another transform. Okay. And with this one, we will get it onto the watch. So I'll just bring it to the center here. I'm going to scale it down. Kind of want this blue ring to be right on the inside of the watch. That's what I did on the last one. All right, so I'm just going to keep positioning this until I get to something that I want. All right, that looks pretty good. And as you can see, it just tracked perfectly onto that. Uh, so next, what I want to do is I want to make the animation, the on animation happen uh, like at this frame. So on the media in, I'm just going to drag it over uh, one node space and then type time speed. Okay. And now with this, I'm just going to add a 28 frame delay. Okay. So now, right here, it's going to start doing the animation. I actually don't want it to be quite this much, so I'm going to come, I'm going to do a 14, 14 frame delay, okay? And you can also adjust the speed, slow it down, speed it up, and that works with anything inside of Fusion. So now, as you can see, that's turning out pretty good. So now what I want to do is add some glow. So I'm just going to, after the transform, add in a glow node. All right, and now I'm going to go around um, I'll bring up the glow size a little bit, add some more glow. Something that I am going to do in the future on this was make the image darker. So I'm just going to do that right away. I'm going to throw in a brightness and contrast node. And then I'm going to bring down the gain a little bit. I'll add a little bit more contrast. Um, I'll bring down the saturation. There we go. I like that. All right. So since the hug graphics are technically a light source, we want it to kind of reflect on our hand. So I'm just going to add a bitmap node. There we go. There we go. So now I'm going to bring the transform into that, into the image, and I'm going to put this into the brightness and contrast. So now we have to go into the bitmap and do invert. Okay. So now this does it opposite. So now as you can see, there should be no difference uh, except for it'll brighten up the HUD a little bit. And what we want to do is add like a bit of a soft edge and play around with these settings. 
just to make it a little brighter like around where the graphic is as you can see like that there we go and I'm also gonna come over here and do color corrector I'll add that I'm gonna we don't actually need the planar tracker anymore so just holding shift and I can just drag it off to the side in the color corrector I'm just gonna go ahead and give it kind of a bluish tint and also put the bitmap into that. Now in the color corrector, I'll come up to the settings and do apply mask inverted. So now as you can see, it'll leave like a bluish tint to my hand wherever the hug graphic is. And once again, you guys can just change those settings um, in here with the soft edge and the high and low. All right, now that that one's done, I'm just going to select all of these, do shift space and type under relay. Okay, just to stay organized. All right, so I'll just leave this off to the side here. And now we're gonna add the map effect uh, to the side. So I'll just grab this and I'm going to merge it up with the circle. Okay, now if I add a transform after this, I'll just move it off to the side, kind of where I want it. All right, and I'll just position this, give it some rotation so it Seems kind of straight there. Bring the scale down a little more. So something like that. And that'll be tracked onto my hand perfectly. There we go. And as you can see, that's automatically updating. Like if I were to bring this away, it darkened my skin a little bit. So this one does not have an on animation. And since the track is imperfect at the beginning because my hand's not in the frame, I'm just going to come into the merge and make it fade on right about here. So just add a keyframe, there we go. And so it ends early at the end, so I'm going to grab uh, this, I'm going to do a time, time speed, and I'm gonna add as much of a delay as I can, just so it still stays to the end. And now if we come up here, as you can see, it's already there when we wanna start playing it. So the perspective of this doesn't quite look right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of an aspect to it, uh, just to try and fake like a 3D look. Now that that's done, I'm gonna do shift space and type glow to add a little bit of a glow to this. So I'm just gonna drag down the transform and after the time speed, I'm gonna do shift space and type glow. All right, now I'll just bring up the glow si size a little bit and bring down the glow amount so it doesn't distort it. There we go, I think that's looking pretty good. I want this to be a little more blue and not quite as green, so I'll just add a color corrector and I will tint this to be blue. And now it's a little too blue, so I'll just bring down my saturation. There we go, something like that. So now that that's done, I'm just gonna bring all my stuff over here, try and organize it a little bit, just get it all together. Um, and then I will add another under relay. All right, so for the levels, I'm gonna do uh, this level effect here first. I will bring it up here. I will add a transform node in and then merge it up down at the bottom here. So this graphic is another one that is 4K, but as you can see, it's not bouncing around. And that's because this background is still defaulting the uh, background to be 1920 by 1080. As you can see, it is coming into the background of all of the merges. So the background is the default size. So that is fine as long as we don't switch this. Because if I were to do Control T, it'd mess um, these ones up and it wouldn't be tracked right. All right, so I'll grab my transform. I will scale it down. I'll move it off to the side where I want it, kind of get it to an appropriate size, something like that. And as you can see, that is tracked on pretty nice. Uh, again, we want the on animation to happen right about here. So after the media in, I'll just do time speed and 28 frame delay. I'm actually going to do about 25, so it's just starting. All right, so there we go. That's looking good so far. I'm just going to add a glow after this. I'll go to a frame where it's completely on. Uh, that's a little too much glow. I'll add a little bit more to the size. Bring this down. Just tweak it till it looks uh, like the other ones. I like that. The reason I'm going through and putting a separate glow on each one of them is because they weren't all rendered the same. Like the map, if I were to put the same glow on the map, it'd be completely blown out. And it all depends on the situation and how big the elements are. Like these lines are thin, but these ones are thick. All right, so I'm just gonna grab this and drag this up, add underlay again. All right, so now we're gonna bring the final levels effect in and I'll just drag this down and go ahead and repeat the same step. So I'll bring a transform and now I will scale this down. I want this to be about the same size as the last one and in the same position. There we go, I like something like that. Find out where I want the animation to start. So I'm gonna have this one start at about right here. Uh, I'm gonna do 28 frames this time, I think. Time speed, if I can type. 
28 frames. And now that'll start my animation. Then I'll add my glow effect and tweak all these settings. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, what we want to add though is like when the hand's coming down here, as you can see, there is no motion blur on any of these elements or moving around. So let's just go into the planar transform and do motion blur. All right, so quality up to 10. I'm just going to leave the shutter angle at 180. These settings all depend on your scene, the how bright it is, but this shot was shot originally uh, pretty bright. So it's not going to have too much motion blur. So we want to go through and add some lens reflection. So we could either do this after all the HUD graphics or we could do it with all of it. So let's just do it with all of it first. So I'll just do lens and go down to reflections. Okay. And as you can see, that's very intense. Um, but let's say we move it over to just the uh, graphics and that makes it look a lot cooler in my opinion. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm also going to go over here and adjust some of the settings, just pretty much bringing the brightness down, just so it's not quite as intense. It's more of a subtle detail. So in mine, I also added a glitch effect, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to select everything here and move it up. So I'll bring the planar transform down, and after the merge, we'll add in a displace effect, okay? So now, if we view the displace effect over on the side here, we can just see all the graphics. And I'm going to bring a background and a rectangle. Make sure the background is set to white. And I'm going to put that into the displace. So now if we come over here and adjust the rectangle, um, we'll just add like a little bit of an angle just so it matches up a little bit more. And now we can come into the displace and change this from radial to X and Y. Okay, and the X refraction I'm just going to bring up a good amount just like that. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to bring the X refraction up. If I view the displays, you can see that. Uh, and then in the background, I'm just going to set the endpoint to 105. 105 and then the outpoint to 107. Okay. Or 108. Something like th two, three, four frames, something there. And as you can see, that'll just be on for a second and then it'll go away. Uh, some other effects that you can do if we come into the rectangle and add a soft edge, that'll make it so that it kind of bends it. And that's kind of the effect that we're going for here. So I'll just bring this up a good amount, just like that, down a good amount. So that looks kind of cool. And then we can actually duplicate the duplicate this. So this time I'm just going to make it two frames long, okay? And what we can do then is grab a background. And this is just going to be a transparent background that's on the entire time and in is the background and I'm just going to copy these and paste them and connect them up then we can grab the rectangle and move it up a little bit and shift this over to let's say 108 okay and then do this to 110 so something like that so now I'll just have a few more glitch effects and I think that'll make it look a little cooler all right so another effect that we're going to add is grain so if we just do type grain as you can see that'll add like a little bit of noise to it so we're just going to get the grain size make it a little bigger maybe um, we don't want a ton of power it's kind of like a subtle effect now we're going to go through and actually add some like lines in it just to make it look a little more realistic almost so how we're going to do this actually is grab a rectangle and a background we got to make this whole thing custom because fusion does not have a tool for it and if we just extend this up, bring it up to the side, we're just going to make these really small. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, so we'll just have the center at 0.5 and bring the height all the way up. All right. And I'll just bring the width down and bring this all the way up to the top here. Okay, so it's just touching. Then what we'll do is do shift space and add a duplicate node. Okay, and we'll just make 10 copies to start and bring the Y value down. If we view this, we'll just make it so that they're all touching. So we'll just make this so that there's just like a little space in between them, okay? So let's just do something like that, extend the copies all the way up as high as we need so that it covers the entire screen. So something like that looks pretty good. And now what this is going to do is if we grab uh, another background and connect it up over here, uh, make sure that is as the background, make sure all of these are transparent. And now if we bring this in as a mask, if we view this, as you can see, there's like little lines cut through it. 
and we can adjust that in the duplicate node by how far away all these are. All right, but that's it, our effect is done. So now if you guys wanted to play fast, cause this is a pretty laggy effect here, uh, what we're gonna do is after actually the media out, we'll just do shift space and type a saver, okay? And now we will just browse and find a spot to put this. So I just made a new folder for it, which is what you wanna do. And I'll just name this watch and save that, okay? And now if we come up to fusion and do under all savers. Once this is done, just drag all these into the edit page and it'll combine it into a clip and it should play back very fast. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Remember to go check out Production Crate for awesome assets. And I'll see you guys next time for another video.